Hi, this is Vaughan of Westcote Bell Pottery. Um, I'm actually going to do another painting video here with, with an adaptation of using paper stencils so that my flowers will pop and really jump out. Whereas in the last pieces I did, they were sort of in the painting and kind of just kind of faded a little bit, I thought, and the yellows didn't show up. So I'm trying to combine my old stencil technique that I use on my landscape pieces. You can look back and see the video at that and update it to do with these. So what I've set up here is a lot of paper stencils that I've cut in the shape of flower shapes. And then I've got all my underglazes here, all laid over the table with all my paint brushes. And I'm gonna paint a few pieces here. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna start with though, so when you're putting paper stencils down, you have to wet them because they have to expand a little bit before they touch the surface of the clay. If you don't do that, they will actually wrinkle on the surface. So I'm just randomly going to pick up some pieces of paper, place them where I think, and I try to count you know, to 10 before I put them down after dipping them. That way I know that they've expanded enough. That all depends on what paper you're using, of course. Um, I'm gonna, I want yellow flowers, so I'm doing these black-eyed Susan looking flowers. Um, and I'm going to do some red flowers as well. But I'm going to try and combine the flowers in groupings of seven, because the actual paper may get lost when I'm applying it. And if I count and say I've got seven in like three or four different groupings, then I have a good chance of finding it again. Okay, so we've got four different groupings. So there's my paper stencils. We're done with those. Let's have a cup of tea. Mm. That's an old cup that I made decades ago when I was doing red clay. All right, so I have all these paint brushes, all different sizes. And I've put some underglazes in the tray already. I've got four different greens. And I'm gonna try different brushes with different thicknesses. Let's get that one in. These underglazes are the new ones to me. I'm not sure how new they are, but these are Mako Fundamentals. Mako took over Duncan, I think, which I always bought. Although I've bought underglazes from lots of different companies over the years. The ones I like the best over the years I found out were Duncan, and they, they're no longer being made. Okay, so you've got to get yourself set to this to feel free and feel like you can do one big stripe like that. It's it, to keep it looking fairly loose. And you've got to time it so that it doesn't run. So you can do a thinner stroke, you can do two strokes with the brush, you'll get a thinner looking coat. So that's the first, this is the lightest color, basically. And I'm pressing really heavy, so I'm not getting much in the way of a thin, delicate brush stroke here, because it's the lightest one. It may look like a wash underneath other colors. I could do it thin if I wanted to, just like that. Get some nice little thin marks, but I don't know if they'll show up because this is a light color. So I'm aiming for big stripes. almost out of that green, so it's good timing. 
I like to use up all the under glazes when I'm painting. Okay, so there's some nice big stripes. You've got one sort of running down a little bit there, so you've got to try and fake that one a little bit. I tried to not, there's another one, but I will trim these at the bottom and I'm gonna paint things in the bottom as okay, well. Okay, the next screen I'm gonna use is uh, Green Mist from Ameco Fundamentals. The first one was UG68 Apple Green. So here we go, we've got Green Mist. I'm gonna continue with this brush and see if it works, but I might move to another brush. Because I'm trying to get some slightly softer lines here. There we go. Okay, this brush is a little big, because I'm trying to get a slightly thinner mark with this one. Okay, so that's the end of this brush because I think it's a little bit too big for the marks that I'm doing now. So I'm going to find my other brush that's, there's a whole variety of them here. Now let's try this one. So I dip it in water so it catches, it pulls the, basically lets the pigment get into the bristles a little easier if the bristles are wet already. So the next one I'm going to do is the let's see what color do we have leaf green again it's another leaf green or have i got two leaf? yeah that's right i've got apple green green mist and leaf green yeah okay so i think this is a little thick let's move on to this one yeah it's a little bit thick it's supposed to flow off the brush easily These are nice underglazes though, because they're not, um, some underglazes come almost like a jelly-like. I think Spectrum are kind of jelly-like. There you go, that's a little nicer, but mix the two together a little bit. I can darken one by dipping in another. This is like the undercoat. because the flowers will appear in front of this, remember, with the paper stencils there. Now I'm trying to get some little lines in there too now. That's where those runs were a little bit, so I can hide those. And if you get one, you can always continue the stroke down a little bit. Look for where they are and then just flow it down on purpose. Because the, the color will run if it's... Okay, now we've got the darkest green, which is actually a, an underglaze by Duncan still. This is called Kentucky Bluegrass.
I think what I'm going to do next is every flower should have a stem. So I've got this brush, which I think you can still buy this type of brush, but um, I've had this for decades, so um, I'm not sure what, it, what it's called. The name has come off. Mm. But anyway, I'm gonna, I can still see the flowers a little bit. And I like this brush because it actually doesn't do like a, a, a fine line. It actually will do a kind of bubbly line almost. But it will break up the monotony of the brush strokes that I've just been doing a little bit. And it makes me feel like I can see where the stems of these flowers are, even though they don't really have any stems, I guess, at this point. So you might be able to make something if you're looking for a brush to do something similar to this. But it's just, you know, it kind of gets lost in there, but it is there, so it kind of shows up a little bit. So it's just a way of breaking up a kind of Japanese brush stroke looking things. I'm gonna get out there and do some gardening today. Just bought about 200 bulbs for flowers and I bought some onion bulbs, about 100 of those as well. So I'm gonna put, push all those in the ground because it's gonna to rain tomorrow. I've been planting lots of flowers already. I have all my bulbs up that I planted last fall. That is so rewarding to see those coming up. And the deer haven't eaten them, which is even more rewarding. Okay, that's around the... So we're done with the greens. So let's move this out of the way. All right, I'm gonna get a knife, a little pinpoint to take these off. Okay, I use an X-Acto blade, which I never lose because I don't want that getting found in my clay while I'm throwing on the wheel. So be aware, these are very dangerous in a pottery studio. So I always know where I put it, that's why I went for it. Okay, so now we take the paper off. Hope you can see this. So you can see what I'm going to do now is that when I do my painting, I will be painting in the spaces where the actual flowers are and I won't have the, un uh, since underglazes are sort of translucent, they show what's underneath up through them. And that's why the last flower pieces I did, I thought the colors did work to a, a fairly good degree, but I felt like they were muddier than the color should have been. So it's a good idea to actually try this technique where the color will not have any green to show through and all that.
like, can you see that? So that's now got to sit for just a few minutes, um, just so that there are any of this wet area down the bottom there doesn't actually, I can start painting fairly soon. I just tested it to see if the underglaze is going to run and it doesn't. So I'm using the shape of the paintbrush to actually put in these brush strokes. And it might be a good idea to have different shape size paintbrushes too. Let's see what we got in there. That's a little bit smaller. That way the petals, I'm using the lid of the uh, underglaze. This is harvest gold to actually, um, yeah, because this, this one here. So I'm just going to use the shape of the brush to put it down. So it really is, pick your paintbrush to determine the, the actual mark you're making. And like I said, I think it's going to be nice because um, where the actual paper is, the brush will overlap the green a little bit. So you're getting this. Here you go. All right. And then the center of the flower is going to be painted with something else. Uh, but I'm going to just fill it in a little bit just for now. And I'm going to let it dry for a while. Now, the other side of the paintbrush, there's a hair coming off that paintbrush there, is a rounded with a point. So I'm going to use this time, I'm going to do the point in the center and just press it in. to get you the round petal at the end instead of the point in that size. So I don't want the underglaze to be too runny at this point. Same with this flower here. Same with this flower here. This is Fire Engine Red, and it's a Spectrum Underglaze. I've had this jar for decades, probably. I don't use red very often. Let's get another drink of tea. Ah, mouse, mouse gray with my oatmeal over the top for the glaze on that one. Okay, so we're going to hopefully this one won't run either. Let's try one and see what happens. No, nope, it isn't running. So once again, I'm using the paintbrush, shape of the paintbrush just to pull 
from the point in the center to the heel of the brush Good. So this is the dabbing brush, remember? Because these are both stems, so... Okay, this is the uh, kind of just the purple flowers, uh, lupins, whatever, and lavender they could be. Um, but these ones I did on the small coffee mugs, and, and I'm doing one of these big jars just the same as that. Um, okay, it's a little bit, uh, it's not too bad. I'm going to paint the lower ones first. So I'm simply using the tip of the paintbrush and bringing it down, leaving the point of the paintbrush. Visible, and the body of the paintbrush makes this central, darker area. So I try and leave it so you can actually see the point of the flower.
So you just basically point down, pull back as you put the point down, you pull back. Be aware that color flows into the body of the paintbrush, so you don't want to press too hard there because it will make a dribble. So I always try and rub the body of the paintbrush onto the edge of the little tray, which is just the lid of the underglaze jar. And do it like that. And I'm going to do this all the way around now. So basically, let's get you close for a second so you can see this as close as possible. I'll do one more and then I'll do the whole thing. And so paintbrush loaded. Let's go one so you can see up here. So it's point down, pull back, 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 point down, pull back. And as long as you get a point, you can keep doing it. But as soon as you feel like you're losing the point kind of thing, you kind of have to load up the brush again and scrape the piece, the, the liquid off the, the heel of the paintbrush. All right. Okay. Okay. That's all the purple stuff done. Uh, but that's just the first layer of color. So now I'm going to add the second, which is a... Um, I just did the, uh, what was I using, violet, now I'm going to use a purple, which is a slightly more intense center to all, each one of these flowers, so I use the paintbrush again with, to try and get that point effect, and it's the same thing, I pull down, in, 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 and I just follow all the flower all the way down, trying to leave that point, but it will now create a much denser center to each one of these flowers. So point, pull down, point, pull down, point, pull down, and repeat. It's starting to get a little bit soft, I think, because the color is pulling some of the white clay up a little bit. That might make it look even better. So point, pull down, point, pull down, point, pull down. and repeat so okay the uh, purple double layer of purple and uh, what was it oh, violet and purple are the two colors i've used so far and now i'm actually going in with the yellow to kind of give that look of a of the flower opening up and producing its little seed stamens whatever they're called And yellow against purple will pop. One of those color circle things. Can you see that? And I may go over with my other yellow too. So I'm using the fan paint brush because that gives a delicate little line, broken line basically I think you'd call it. Okay, um, let's see if we can get this back a bit. So that's it for this piece. Um, this was the one where I just painted it to resemble lavender uh, or you know we have lupins around here and stuff. Um, but it's a sort of made up flower anyway. It's just the painting took over from the reality. Um, but anyway, so that's um, two pieces and I've got uh, three of these on the go at the moment. Okay, now I'm starting with a 506 bright yellow, which is from Spectrum. We don't buy these under glazes anymore, but um, I got it left over, so I'm going to use it up. I'm painting it over the top using the same brush strokes, but with a slightly smaller brush um, of the Harvest Gold underglaze. By pulling the brush back, remember always to pull the brush back from the point and turn it around a little bit so you continue to get that point. 
So I'm going to put the yellow on a little thicker because it faded so much in the last pieces that I made. Okay, I've now done two coats of the red just by the same marks that I did the first time, coming down and then going up on the tulips and the same as I did on the yellow flowers on the red there. So I've got two coats of red, so that should be intense. And then I've got two different yellows layered over the top of each other in those locations. Uh, and that's actually the, um, those flowers, I think two coats should give me that intensity that I was looking for. And plus the green now will not show through those flowers. Um, and um, so I think we um, have got enough definition so I can now start painting the other flowers in over the top. Okay, so now I'm using two very old Amoco underglazes that I have had for years as well, but these colors work really good. And Amoco underglazes always had the nice flow, which the Mako fundamentals, I'm happy, just first time I've used them today, and they're working, they're working pretty good. So once again, using the paintbrush's shape, I'm just making marks using the actual paintbrush itself to give me the shape of the Okay, the next step on the painting, because I've got the purple flowers, I'm going to lift it up a bit higher, but I thought I would paint in these little black-eyed Susans a little bit. So I've got a paintbrush I just basically cut off the end of the paintbrush so it's not rounded anymore. And this is just a dark brown. When you're painting, a lot of times you're really looking not just to reproduce the shape of something that's actually in nature, but you're trying to m make colors work on your painting too. So I'm looking for something that will give me a bit of contrast. So let's see what we get with this. And I'm probably going to try and do something with a blue. And then I'm going to rinse that out. This is the same color I'm painting on my other flowers, so I don't want to use too much of it or just blend in too much with the others, although that's kind of a nice pattern that's created there. Then I'm going to use my other purple, which now I've painted in these flowers, what I'm doing with this one is I go over the other paintings. While that's drying, I'm going to move back to these and put the other color back in over the top. And now I've elected through just pondering to finish off these little tulips, which I'm doing by pressing the brush up and following the shape of what I imagine the petals would be to give my tulips a little more interest. When I'm painting anything like this, I tend to use nature as a starting point and then just continue using um, what I think might look nice. But um, So moving over next to my these flowers again. Um, I think that will need to be a little bit more intense because I think the red might show through, so I'm going to dab a bit more on there. So 
but I'm going to paint some little speckles in those areas when they're dry enough. I'm looking to do a light speckling that's better in the center of the Black Eyed Susan area. Now I'm going to try and enhance these tulips again. So I have a tiny little yellow paintbrush here. Well, it's not so tiny. And just give that yellow I already have down there a little bit of more variation. Uh, doing like a, a, a furry kind of mark at the end of these flowers. Okay, this paintbrush is between a regular paintbrush and a fan paintbrush because it has little extra strands sticking out below the body of the paintbrush. So it enables you to paint lines faintly without the body of the brush to pushing down. So it's like you can paint multiple lines at the same time. So that I can just finish up by getting a little bit of, at the bottom of these is a little bit too much grass I think there so I'm going to paint some more lupins in just down there. Since the purple seems to stand out well against the other colors on the piece I figure we can break up the green a little bit. And I think I just have to dab a little bit over there, and I may be there. And I need that paintbrush. Just to give my little Black Eyed Susans here that little bit of definition. Okay, I think this one I'm going to say is done. Hi, um, I'm a talking head. These are the three that I did. Um, and I put them on little so you can get a, a, a you know, just a view of them together. Um, each one was painted slightly differently, but using the same techniques I was showing all the way through. Um, like the tulips are different on this one to this one, but basically the same type of technique. 
All right, so um, we'll see what they look like. This was the only different one where I didn't do anything other than the kind of uh, lupin type flowers on this one. Just bring you really close. Get you down. So, you know, it looks a lot, you know, like it's kind of intense, but um, the procedure I was showing should give you some way of reproducing this type of look. Obviously, everybody does something a little different, and I encourage people to try things new. I don't want people just to copy. I mean, that would be, um, you know, you, that's not your, that's, uh, you know, you need to introduce your own individual character into your pieces but I think it's interesting for people to take something and move further with it just take a technique and use it and you know see see what you can do with it I'm not sure if you can get to the back one here let's see if you can get a better view of that one it's a little taller the one at the back there we go and I'll show you what they look like when I unpack a kiln for a kiln unloading. All right. Well, thanks for joining me for this video. It's a little further than the mugs, obviously a lot bigger pieces, but the same type of techniques. All right. Thanks for joining me at westcobellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia.